the one thing that, that the Mujahideen did is the Mujahideen fighting against the Soviets found that one of the best ways to fight against them was not simply using weapons. What they did was they found ways to sell opium, to sell heroin to the Russian soldiers themselves. And as they sold to them, they found that it undercut their capability while at the same time made enough money to go out and buy more weapons. And that's what they did. That's what Mujahideen did. And then it undercut the capability of the Russians so they couldn't fight particularly well. So when everything collapsed, all of these addicts, all of these junkies in, in the Russian military go back to the Soviet Union, former Soviet Union, Russia now. You know what? Right now, do you know who uses more heroin than any country in the world? It's the Russians. And you know when that really started? It started with Afghanistan, really. That's where the drive really started, and that's when it exploded over the last 20 years. And many people are tying that directly back to their involvement in Afghanistan. So what's happening now is the Taliban is doing the very same thing by focusing in on the American soldier— and they're using this tactical weapon of heroin. Why? Because it's shockingly cheap. And they can sell this for, for almost nothing, less than a dollar a day. Shockingly potent. And now they've been able to change it so they can put it in cigarettes. And now I want you to contemplate it in this sense. What we find is that the average soldier, the average Marine, these guys are on their third, fourth, fifth, sixth deployments. That's where they are. How many of these people are, are having family lives that are blowing apart at home because they haven't seen their families or their kids and divorces are rampant in the military? You go talk to the Pentagon right now, they'll deny this. They deny this from the get-go because from their perspective, the last thing they want to do is say something like this. But let me ask you this. Let me take you to the VA. Let me take you to the veterans' hospitals and see the number of people who are hooked on various things from meth to heroin to just about everything else. Because remember, just like being gay in the military, you bring that up, you bring up that I'm using heroin, trust me, you want to get your ass bounced out? That's what happens. That's how it works inside the military now. So you make the argument that the military's on top of this? Please, they have no idea how this is actually playing out. What they're saying right now is they haven't seen any of this, and yet there is evidence out there that it's growing. And what you're also finding, and you talk to some of the people who've been involved here, is it undercuts the capability of the U.S. military. Because imagine, you're sitting in Afghanistan someplace, and you're high half the time because your life is blowing apart. Is that a shock? It wouldn't be to me. I'm 24 years old. I haven't been home since I was 18, and I have no idea when I'm ever going to get back. And here I am fighting this war just like I fought the last one when they sent me first to Afghanistan and then they shipped me over to Iraq and I fought over there for a while. I went home for 10 minutes and then they shipped me back here. And that's what's happening right now. This is happening with NATO soldiers. This seems to be happening with American soldiers. And the tactical advantage is brilliant because it's a win-win, isn't it? It's a win-win for the Taliban because what they do is they undercut the capability of NATO and the American soldier in the short in the short. But in the long term, what you get is the possibility of infecting these very same areas, just like the Mujahideen did to the Soviets, to the Russian soldiers who were fighting there all those years ago. If you can take them down in the short term, fantastic. But imagine taking them down in the long term. And think about this from the psyche of the Taliban, who will look at this and say, wait a second, you come over here and you blow up my country and you kill my people? Tell me, what's not a marvelous response but to destroy you individually and then to find a way to infect you so you can go back and destroy your own country? What part about that don't they love? That's what's going on right now. That's one of the things that President Obama is having to struggle with.